Vishwanath Mandani. Uh, welcome to new class which has already started. Your lectures have begun for two or three days you are taking the lectures. Since it is cardiovascular system, you are focusing different aspects of cardiovascular physiology. We are now approaching a very important cornerstone of diagnostic cardiology and this is ECG. I'm sure you are familiar with the word ECG from before also. This is a very big topic. It's an opening ceremony. You are starting and laying down the foundations of ECG and you will continue your journey inshallah in the coming years also. In our cardiovascular system, in today's lecture, we will try to cover the physiological aspects of the ECG. Later, we will have the application exercise and we will have a tutorial on the ECG so that you are trained about how to see the rate, how an ECG appears, what is normal and what is abnormal. We will not expect you to diagnose the cases at this level, but you should be able to differentiate that, okay, this is a normal ECG and this does not seem like a normal ECG, okay, at least. Tashkis is not the point right now. Secondly, after doing so, in the coming weeks, we will have another lecture, which is a shared lecture between physiology and pharmacology, and that lecture is about arrhythmias, the abnormalities of rates and rhythms. We'll take that lecture. Following that lecture, we will have another tutorial so that your understanding will improve, inshallah, how you see arrhythmia. The first tutorial will be the basic one, and the second tutorial will be about the application and abnormalities, simple abnormalities, not very complicated ones. Anyway, you will see a lot regarding ECG in the coming years. As you go in medicine, as you go in surgery, as you go in any ward, the cardiovascular system investigations are done and one of the basic investigations done for the cardiovascular system is ECG, which is our topic of interest today. Okay, so as the topic says, it is the fundamentals, <coughs> only beginning of the ECG, okay. the basic idea about the ECG because you are not aware of the details of the ECG doing it for the first time, so we will start from a very simple approach. Okay. Let us have a look at the objectives and see, well the size is small, I don't think that the back side can read it properly, at the back, sitting at the back, okay. so I will read it for you. Sir, please. Okay, kindly settle down with switched off mobiles. This is the requirement of the class, okay? Don't want to see mobiles over your desks, okay? Keep it silent. My mobile is silent. Your mobile should also be silent, okay? So, we are looking at the objectives of the ECG lecture. I read it for you. We will begin with a very basic area which is definitions. We will talk about three basic definitions and we will try to differentiate these terms so that you become clear. The first term is electrocardiogram, the other one is electrocardiograph and the third term is electrocardiography. Some of you may have idea, some of you may not. So let us see. One by one. Then we'll talk about the physiological principles of this electrical activity of the heart. How does the cardiac impulse? I'm using the word cardiac impulse, expecting that you have done it in the previous lecture with Dr. Majdi, right? You have taken the lecture in which you have been told about how the cardiac impulse generates from the pacemaker and how does it pass down and 
follows its journey through different areas of the heart, and finally it finishes. The next impulse arises and it carries on again and again and again like this. Okay? So, we we'll talk about the electrophysiological principles. When we come to see the graph of the ECG, we will dissect it and we will see different portions or different areas one by one that what is the meaning of this shape, what is the meaning of the other shape, how do we interpret those shapes and what do they signify. We will also define some devices and attachments which are used. These terms are common like a lead or a terminal or an electrode. These terms we will talk about also. Definitely we will talk about the significance of the ECG pattern or the wave. That what does it show physiologically or what does it reflect? If it is abnormal, what does it reflect pathologically? And in the end, we'll try to cover up a complete system of the ECG, which is a 12-lead system. I'll explain it to you. What is the meaning of 12-lead system and why do we use that? Okay. So let us open account from the very beginning and let us define different terms one by one. Okay, but I don't want to show you that slide before. I just want to have a feedback. Uh, a little code knowledge from you. If you are introduced to a term electrocardiogram, I'm saying electrocardiogram. All right. What is your idea about it? If anyone knows, raise the hand, please. Please. Thank recording you. of cardio electrical activity. Recording of the electrical activity of the heart. Okay. You mean the final result you are getting? or the recording that you are getting it gets in the sheets in the form of paper or in the form of a graph <coughs> all right yes please would you like to write something yeah okay now we are changing the track okay since other definition is coming the device which is used he's saying okay so now you have got the result and he's saying the device anyone else who would like to solve the conflict is it a device or the result? He's saying result. He's saying machine or the device is electrocardiogram. What is your idea? I want third opinion. Yes. Anyone? Yes, please. The electrocardiogram is the machine. Okay. The electrocardiogram is the record. Okay. All right. One more opinion is coming. Any other opinion? Any other opinion? Okay. So let us solve this problem. Electrocardiogram and electrocardiograph. We are often confused between these two terms and actually the terms are kind of misleading also. It is not what is written that we understand. Electrocardiogram is the graphical recording, not the machine. So he is right. Not the process, no? okay? It is the result that you are getting, the paper which is coming out or on the monitor <coughs> when you see the fluctuations, that is known as the electrocardiogram, the result, okay? What you see, the waves and different fluctuations you see, that result is known as ECG or the electrocardiogram. Electrocardiograph, on the other hand, now what will be the electrocardiogram then? Machine. Machine. The machine. See, it's a misleading term. When you say graph, you might think, oh, graph means graph paper or the result, but it's the other way around. All right? This kind of mystery <coughs> is used in medicine and science very often and in technology also. For example, telegram. Telegram is a message which comes on the paper and telegraph is the machine. Okay? So it's the opposite what we write. And that has been done from the very beginning historically. So we have not changed these terms in order to avoid confusion. Let it be. There are many misnomers in medicine and in science, and we still respect them, but keep it very clear. Electrocardiograph is graph is machine. And electrocardiogram is all right. Let us have a look at the definition. Okay? Now you are defining electrocardiogram. Okay? 
Can you see what is written over there? The graphical result or the representation of the bioelectric activity. You're using the word bioelectric activity because it's coming out of living cells. The electric acti activity is not coming from the machine. It's coming from a human being cell. So you are using the term bio here, all right? Heart cells are the origin and that's why it's myocardium. So this is electrocardiogram abbreviated as or the short form is ECG. So ECG means the paper strip or the monitor result which is coming. Okay. You see it in the hospitals that monitor is running in the ICU, in Tawari, in different places in the ward. And you also see the results of the ECG in the form of the paper sheets. Okay. Long papers or broad papers but results are there. All these results are electrocardiograms okay now look at this one now what are you looking at you're looking at the machine and that machine is giving you the result but your focus is now the machine so machine is graph and result is <coughs> graph <coughs> okay well now you're talking about the process or the procedure when you talk about the process or the procedure then it will be <coughs> electrocardiography okay so that procedure by which we usually obtain or take the ECG by attaching different wires and metallic pieces over the surface of the body and then we get the result from the machine that is known as electrocardiography okay all right quickly very quickly a cornerstone of diagnostic cardiology ECG a very basic investigation used for many purposes, only few are written here, many more are there, but at your level, you must understand few terms. I hope some of the terms are clear to you and some may not be. Look at that. Cardiac arrhythmias, are you familiar with the word cardiac arrhythmias? Yes. To some extent? Yeah. All right. Arrhythmias, abnormalities. Okay. The word A here is again a misnomer, but still we use dysrhythmias or arrhythmias, same thing. A means absent, right? But arrhythmias, you have done medical terminology actually, yeah. so you are, mashallah, better aware of things. But here again, arrhythmias means abnormalities in the regularity and the rate of the heart rate. <coughs> okay. Different types of abnormalities. Collectively, we call this group as arrhythmias. Okay. ECG is diagnostic, the shpees for arrhythmias. One thing which you can say for sure that we can diagnose arrhythmias by ECG. Direct diagnosis. Take the ECG and many arrhythmias can be diagnosed with the help of simple ECG. So it is a gold standard in terms of diagnosis. So if you say, well, what is the ECG there for? Tell me one word and you will use or you will begin with arrhythmias, the first thing. Well, it's not the story of arrhythmias only. ECG is helpful in diagnosis of other diseases also. But then you need some more investigations. All alone, ECG is very effective in arrhythmias. But with the help of other investigations, with a group of investigations, ECG is also giving you a help, an initial clue, or in the follow-up changes myocardial ischemia and infarction I think again you are aware of this word myocardial ischemia and infarction these two terms you have done it in the general pathology okay heart attack simply when the one portion of the heart is damaged and the person suffers from a complex syndrome pericarditis the word is giving you the meaning well Changes in the ECG help you, yes, definitely. So there are changes. What changes? We'll come later, not now. It's not our scope right now. Chamber hypertrophy. When I use the word chamber hypertrophy, do you get the meaning? Yes. What do you mean by chamber here? Any one chamber of the heart, you know, the chambers of the heart. Okay? Either atria or ventricles. Anything you can say. Okay. What disturbances? What do you mean by that, Shabab? Ionic changes of fluctuations, abnormalities in the calcium, potassium, sodium, sometimes other ions also. Well, they bring about changes in cardiac function. And if you record the ECG, you will find some striking changes 
which are characteristic of some ionic fluctuations. Okay? So it's helpful, please. Electrolyte disturbances. We'll come and when we talk about arrhythmias in the shared lecture, which will follow in, in the coming weeks, you will see that what are arrhythmias and how do we treat arrhythmias with the drugs. It's a very interesting discussion, but please, first of all, you need to understand the foundation of the ECG. Without which, it will be very difficult for you to carry on with arrhythmias. Drug effects and toxicity. Sometimes, Dr. Hatton has told you about the toxicity and adverse effects in general pharmacology. You have been told in the foundation model. And now you will face in every segment the side effects in toxicology. You know, drugs in their excessive amounts have effects on different systems of the body. Well, the cardiovascular system is also affected. One part is heart. So, heart also shows the toxicity to so some of the drugs which we use for different purposes, not for only cardiac purpose, but for extra cardiac problems also. For cardiac problems and extra cardiac problems, we use a variety of drugs. And these drugs, in, when the abnormal levels are there in the plasma, they have some deleterious effects on the heart also, some bad functions, and you can record the changes by ECG. So drug toxicity also changes the function of the heart, and that can be seen in the ECG also. You will see, inshallah. Very interesting. And sometimes, you know, now for different patients of the heart, we implant different devices, the batteries or the pacemaker, because if the SNO is not working or if there is a conduction problem, then we have got to implant something, attach something under the skin or inside some kind of a battery or a pacemaker, and then you have to follow for the maintenance purpose the function of that battery. So time to time you do ECG and you see that is the heart going normally in the function or not. So when different devices are used in the follow-up or in the maintenance phase, we keep on doing and repeating the ECG. All right? Am I clear so far? Yes. yes. All of us? Yes. At the back also? Am I loud enough for the back? Okay. okay. We we'll talk more about these things in the coming lecture of arrhythmias. All these terms will come again. We'll open up, inshallah. Look at different machines used, which have been used in different eras. Now these are the latest machines. Old machines were metallic boxes and kind of bigger also. But now you are getting the computerized machines, autonomous function. You just put the buttons, okay? It's a touch sensor system, just like your touch bonds, okay? You just touch it and everything is there and you get the whole result after attaching the wires. It doesn't take you long, okay? So these are the different machines, monitors, in the e, you have seen in the intensive care units, CCUs in Tawari and in different wards of the hospital, these kinds of units which are there, okay? And you see there's a continuous monitoring. These Monitors are also kept at nursing stations where paramedical staff and doctors are sitting and they are monitoring the function. All the patients they can see. Central also. Anyway, different sorts of machines, these are electrocardiographs. Do you agree with me? Yes. They are not electrocardiograms, they are graphs. Graphs, okay? Machines. Okay. Very interesting point about the term which is now coming up. You know, it's it's a story of Connecting the wires over the body, without which you cannot take the ECG, okay? It's not a Wi-Fi system so far, okay? That you can record it from directly. Something is there and without any wire you are doing it. Maybe in the future we will have it. But right now, for right now, we have the connections. We are getting into that era. These are the different clips which are used, which are placed over the hands. And to so these clips, the wires are attached. And the other end of the wire is going into the machine. So it means the metal is touching the body surface, some areas, limbs, here, or over the chest. Okay? So these attachments, <coughs> these clips, they become the electrodes. If they are attached to the limbs, you will call them limb electrodes. If they are attached on the surface of the chest, you will call them chest electrodes or the precordial electrodes. Okay, now there is another term coming up. I want you to answer this. Any one of you, I'll prefer if the back side is 
giving the response. The term precordium from the backside, anyone can describe the term or give the meaning of the word precordium? Precordium. It's not pericardium, it's precordium. Okay, the word is, yeah? Before the heart, okay, logically, you are, you are a logical thinker, you are saying before heart, but what do you mean before heart? Before heart, there is pericardium, before heart, there are internal structures, before heart, ribs are present, before heart, skin is present. What do you, what do you mean by pericardium then? Around the pericardium. Well, see. <coughs> What is this area? What do, what do you call this area? Chest, chest, chest. chest right? Yes. Okay. What is this area? This. Sides. I'm asking what, what do you call this? Sides. Sides of what? Chest. Still chest. What is this area? Chest. Bag of what? Chest. It's all chest. Okay. Alright. So chest is all around. If chest is all around, you are selecting an area which is called precordium. Which area should it be? This area? Or this area? Or the back side? Or precordium? This area? No. If I say this area, the area of the chest overlying the heart, where heart is modulated, the bulb is modulated, that area, that particular, not the whole anterior chest, that specific part is known as precordium. And there you attach different leads here, okay, close to heart, isn't it? So the leads will be precordial leads, okay? Chest leads or precordial leads? I like it. I like it. Precordial. From the word precordium, we are talking about the precordial leads, when we say all the precordial electrodes. I'll give you the meaning of leads. We have not used this word so far. But we come to this word, okay? So these attachments which are attached, if you see the metallic cups, do you see the metallic cups? You press it and attach it one, two, three, four, in specific areas, and this part is precordium. Alright? So I think you can identify which area or which electrodes are for the limbs, clips for the hands and feet, and which are for the okay. But these are the old traditional attachments. Now disposable attachments are coming like a metal piece is there a little and you remove it and put it like this and connect the wire to it. Later after doing the ECD, you remove it and throw it away. Everything is disposable now. Okay? So if you have the money, if you have the facilities, you will use the disposable system. If you don't, you will use this reusable system, the metallic permanent cups like this. Okay? All right. Now, Shabazz, the term electrode <coughs> is known to you. Electrodes are the metallic attachment or the devices which are attached over the surface of the body. And then to the electrode, you connect the cables or the wires. And these wires are going to be machine terminals. Okay? Machine has a positive terminal and machine, machine has two terminals. We'll talk about that. Okay? So the word terminal, terminal is for the machine. The word cable is for the wire, connecting wire. And the word electrode is for the body attachment, what you are attaching on the body. So electrode, cable and the terminal of the machine. This is the connection. So it means now you have connected the machine with the body, isn't it? On the body what you are keeping? Electrodes. Electrodes. What is the connection between the machine and the body? Yeah. Cable. And what is there yeah. to which, yeah, which part of machine? It's terminal. You're using terminal. Okay? So are we comfortable with the terms terminal, cable or wire and electrodes? No confusion? Electrode. I'll go back. These attachments or clips. Electrodes. To these clips, you will connect the wire, yeah. cable. cable, and this wire is going to one particular yeah. point. Yeah. All right, this is the whole system. Okay, okay. Leads. <coughs> well, loosely speaking, leads are the connections. Okay. 
This is not a lead which is attached over your skin. This is, you know, what is it? Electrode. Electrode. So use the proper word. It is not a lead. Sometimes loosely and wrongly we say it's a lead attached. Okay. Well, lead is actually made by a connection. Lead is a circuit. It's a circuit of the current flow. And that lead is established by two terminals of the machine. When you are attaching two electrodes on the skin, some part of the skin, and these are going to the machine, and the machine terminals are connected, then there is a circuit which is complete circuit which is made or it is established. That complete circuit of current flow is known as a lead. So lead is a system which you make. Lead is not a wire. Lead is not a metallic piece. Lead is not a terminal. Lead is actually a connection by which you record a particular electrical activity of the heart. Okay? So you make the leads and then you record the ECG. For making the leads, what do you require? Electrodes, Cable. cables, Cable. the terminal of the machine and machine itself. So you establish a complete circuit and then you record it. Now, in a traditional and conventional ECG, even to this point, in our modern cardiology, we use a standardized system of 12 leads. How many leads we make? 12. 12. Okay. So we make 12 different leads. Why? We'll discuss inshallah. But a complete ECG, when you see the result, it is giving you a 12 lead system. When you go to the doctor or the hospital and you get your ECG done, the result that you'll get, you'll see, oh, so many different names are written here. You count, 12 systems are there. Yani, how many leads? 12. 12 leads. The results of 12 leads are given to you. And this is completely covering the heart from all aspects. Okay? So, a complete system of ECG is a 12 lead system. You can obtain ECG from any one lead. There is no problem. Okay? But, for perfect results and for diagnosis, we have a standard and how many leads do we use? 12 leads. We'll see. Okay. All right. Now please, going, stepping in, into the leads briefly, I demonstrate the leads inshallah in the skill lab and we'll make the leads, then you'll understand better. But I just want you to have a little idea about the leads right now so that you are familiar with the terms when you go to the clinical skill lab. This is not the scope of discussion in detail how do you make the leads. Okay? How many total leads? 12. 12. 12. 12. Okay? Now these leads are made by attaching different electrodes. Okay? I attach one electrode here. I attach one electrode here. One here. One here. Okay? And I attach one, two, three, four, five, six here. Okay. All together, how many electrodes am I attaching on the ten? ten. ten. Okay. Yes. But how many leads are we making? So there is a difference. Okay. You are simply attaching how many electrodes? Twelve. Ten electrodes ten. over the skin. Okay. But by their combinations in the machine, you can make how many leads for the lead systems? Twelve lead systems. Okay? Because the lead systems are made by the machine internally. Okay? Machine makes different combinations of the limbs and of the chest like this. And in this way the machine can develop how many leads? 12 leads. Okay? You switch on machine and you will get the results of the leads. The numbers are written. We want. Now, I'll give you a simple concept of the lead. You know, if you are recording the current flow, we are going into electrophysics very basic. Okay, one simple concept. Okay. You are moving and you are taking the result. The current flow is happening between the different poles. If you have a difference, if one is positive and other is negative, then you will have a current flow from one pole to the other pole. Okay? Now the question is, if you are using two poles, yani one terminal of the machine is taken as a positive terminal and one terminal of the machine is made the negative terminal, <coughs> then how many poles are you using? Two. One is positive, one is negative and the circuit is made in which the current will flow. So how many poles are you using? Two. 
two poles. One is positive pole, one is negative. 